All right, Shalom. Before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rakak Barash, the water to the elders and apostles, Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akim. Walk, walking, learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. All right, this is going to be another uh, video through the Spirit. Now, this topic came up yesterday at camp. We were dealing with and explaining, you know, the so called cavemen. Uh, and we understand now in this truth that this is speaking of. Esau Edom. All right, this happened to the Edomites. This isn't. This didn't happen to <laughs> all of humanity. You know, stuck in its mode for twenty thousand million bajillion fanfillion adillion years. All right, I'm going to be getting some scriptures to show that. All right, uh, and we're going to be starting in Revelation, and we're going to be getting a scripture out of Job and a scripture out of Daniel. We'll seal the deal. You know, but I just wanted to get this imagery up. This shows you, you know, this is how Esau was living for a time period. And what this really shows you is uh, how powerful the Heavenly Father is, how he can take someone out of a state of simplicity and turn them into a ruler. All right, and it's like if I didn't, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakat Rash, to the elders and apostles, the great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akim, Wad Wathi, learning and teaching the truth and sincerity. All right, so like if I forgot to, you know, but we're going to be starting with this. All right, Revelation chapter 21, be quiet. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. All right, so that angel is our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Hey, after I'm gonna get to it, you had when Rome fell, all right. You had the end of uh, basically Esau Edom's rulership, all right. You know, shy through the spirit, he put in the major players, one of them being Septimius Severus. He had all the major players come through that required the fall of Rome, all right. And it says, What having the key of the bottomless pit? We understand that that is Europe, all right, because the bottomless pit. Is the place where the beast rose from. All right. It says, He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, which is Esau Edom. He is the one that has the spirit of the serpent. All right. The old dragon taking it all the way back, all the way back to Genesis. It says, And Satan and bound him a thousand years. Uh, and Satan simply adversary. Uh, in that thousand year period. Now, you, if you go to this on Google, how long was the Dark Ages? Now here, uh, these assholes, they want to say between 500 to 1,000. We understand that it's 1,000. And I'm going to go to a clip in a second to show you. I just want to read it. It says, migration period also called the Dark Ages or early Middle Ages. It says the early medieval period of Western European history, specifically the time. Like you. I turned on my phone. It says specifically the time when there was no Roman or Holy Roman Emperor in the West. Or more generally, all right, so right there, when there was no more of the Roman Empire, all right, and if I just click down right here, uh, which one was it that I clicked on? You have this one, and there's another one I wanted to double check. Yep. Okay, why is it called the Dark Ages, they say? It says, while it is true that such innovations as Roman concrete were lost, and the literacy, liter literacy rate was not as high in the early Middle Ages as in ancient Rome, the idea of the so-called Dark Ages came from Renaissance scholars like Petrarch, who viewed ancient Greece and Rome as the pinnacle of human achievement. All right. So this is why it got one of its names, because it was the fall of Esau Edom. He called it dark because it was the fall of him and it was the rise of who? Jacob. All right. Because we ruled for a thousand years. And I'll get this video, which I'll leave the link to. The brother had re-uploaded it from Elder Yashawamba. Uh, detailing it, all right, and this is the, the thousand year period. So Esau, Edom fell, Greece was done, Rome was done. All right, one of the key players in that was Septimius Severus, an Israelite, a so called Negro, who got up in the throne seat and started getting them Edomites out the way. And eventually, you know, all of Rome fell, and the empire that came up next was this. All right, so let's, I'm gonna hit play. No more, all right, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. All well, right. you know, it's like it. Let me read this. Yep. Verse 3 says, And cast him into the bottomless pit, 
and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more to the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. All right, council, they were out of power. Esau eat them for a thousand years in Europe. All right. They were, they were no longer, Rome was down. You know, they didn't have the authority, the sway in the world that they once held, but they, it tells you that they would be loosed after that season, which would become the Renaissance period that this guy was a part of Petrarch. All right. It tells you it, it was, it was named that it was named the dark ages. Once Esau came back into power. All right. So let me come back. All right. So he was bound, all right, for a thousand years. Now, we say that this is the Byzantine Empire, and we can back that up that this is talking about the Byzantine Empire, okay? When you type in how long did the Byzantine Empire last, what does it tell you here, all right? It said there were many factors that allowed the Byzantine Empire to last 1,000 years. And at the end of the Roman Empire, which included a fact, the, the fact the con the, that Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, was protected with walls that lasted almost the, the entire thousand years. Now, Byzantine means backwards. And when Esau goes into the Byzantine Empire, he calls it the Dark Ages, in which for a period of a thousand years, he's, let, he's telling you that everything was just dark. Nothing happened. There's nothing worth recording. That right there solidifies it. The Byzantine Empire was the empire... That came up next and reigned for a thousand years, which would put us, when you look at these numbers, they want to say 1400 or 400. That would put us where? Let's see. When did the Renaissance start? When would that put us around? They say 1300, 14th century. All right. So it would put us at around them a thousand years. All right. 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, right? which all links up. To the spirit. So for that thousand years, Esau was on the bottom and out of power, locked away in Europe. All right, and what and what estate was he in? He was in this estate. All right, and let's get another scripture to back it up. Now we're gonna go to Job. Go to Job. Where is it at? Where is it at? Thirty. So I thought, yep. We're going to start at Job 30, and we're going to be reading for a minute. So now we understand. You know, I'm, I'm flying through it, but I just want to get to this uh, point. And I don't know how long this thing will record before it starts fucking up. All right, so we understand that now Esau eat him. He fell after the Roman Empire. He was locked away in Europe for a thousand years. All right, this equates to the Dark Ages. He, he likes to say that, oh, it was because, you know, low literacy rate, you know, um... You know, nothing was going on. You know, we're going to show why. All right. Not only was he in the caves, but who else was ruling in that time period? All right. We're going to go to Job 31. Uh, let me see. I can go to this. Let me see. Let me see. Yep. <clears throat> Just double check. Yep. Job 31. It says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to set with the dogs of my flock. All right. Verse 1. Uh, they showing you and now this Job was literally speaking this out of his mouth, but this has a spiritual meaning. All right, Esau Edom. And in that mode, he wasn't in <laughs> his right senses. All right, he would have got behind Fido and got to breaking down Fido back. All right, there was a, a we was talking about it at camp. There was a I forget what uh city the brother mentioned, but you had a lady in the middle of the street getting knocked down by a goat. I forget what country and what city the brother of Shaman mentioned uh, when we got to discussing all this yesterday at camp, you know, bringing it out. All right, jumping down to verse three. Uh, you know, I'll just keep reading. It says, yeah, uh, where to might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief <clears throat> to dwell in the clefts of the valleys in the caves of the earth and in the rocks among the bushes. They braid. All right, we're going to get this word. Uh, one second. It says among the bushes, they braid under the nettles. They were gathered together. 
All right, so what this just described was the estate of E, all right, when he was annexed from civilization after the fall of his so-called great kingdom, all right. It says what? He cut up mouths by the bushes. He was eaten out of the uh, flora, meaning out of the earth, like a wild animal, all right. They was driven out. They was kicked out. And it says he went to the clefts of the rocks and the caves of the earth, quite literally the term cavemen. They were literally, literally living in caves and rocks, all right. It says among the bushes they braid, under the nettles they were gathered together, sleeping out in the wilderness. It says among the bushes they braid. Let's get that word braid real quick. Braid. <laughs> Utter a bray of a donkey or a mule. Uh, speak or laugh loudly or harshly. So basically, they made a, a noise, all right, a, a, a beast like noise. Matter of fact, now we'll go to it in the blue letter. This is Job 30 and 7. Yeah, okay. We'll get that word bray now out of the Hebrew. All right, making noises like donkeys and mules. All right, hey, cave dwellers, knuckle draggers. All right, let's go to Job. Hey, this is their history. You know, they want to say that we're this and that. Well, we got you assholes too. You had your low points too, you bunch of uh, sons of guns. You know, the motherfuckers, hey, he liked to act like he did. He the damn spice to the ice <laughs> on this planet, man. Let's go to braid. It looks like uh, Nahak or uh, Nahakwa or Nah Nahak. All right. To braid, to cry, to cry out, scream from hunger, root, braid. All right, as an ass. So making animalistic noises. All right. Why? Because they were living an animalistic life. Clawing at shit, tackling shit, busting shit in the head with rocks. Let's see what other images we get. All right. Swords and shit. Uh, I mean, I saw a uh, bone stabbing spears and shit. And they dressed up playing, but they look natural. They look in their natural state, y'all. They, they look dressed up, but that's, that's them. That's how they get down. Shit. What else have we? You know, just, just to further pick on this guy as he's falling from his glory, you know, bucket naked, you know, just daggone beast. <laughs> That's a big head, <laughs> you know, just daggone uh, beast, carving shit into the walls. All right. And this history actually, this actually happened to them, y'all. That's why you can go to those cave sites and find carvings because they were living like that for a minute. All right. As a matter of fact, we'll do this. Type this in now. Mount Petra. All right. So they went and were living, and was stuck living like rocks, living like this for a minute, living in holes. Now this is a little bit more intricate and detailed. You know, this is probably when they started wising it up. <laughs> they was able to put that together. All right. And then how are our cities built today? How are our cities built today? This should show you who who was in power, without a doubt. You know, I'm, I'm flipping through them uh, pretty quick, but I just want to show you. They, what group of people lived in rocks? Come on now, y'all. Let's do this. Get another idea. See, these are more underground. I didn't really want to. Let me do. Let me do this. Cave. Let's do this. Shit like this. There we go. You know, digging holes with their fucking knuckles and bones and shit, clawing at shit. That's how they had to get down. All right, coming back. It says they were children of fools. Yeah, children of base men. They were vile in the earth. Uh, they were vile in the earth. So they became based. They became simple. The Heavenly Father took their knowledge, their wisdom, and their understanding from them at the fall of their empire and put them underneath our feet. It says they were vile in the earth. So they were accounted as nothing. And now, verse 9, the situation we're in now, it says, And now am I their song? Yeah, I am their byword. All right. So this goes to show you that now these assholes have uh, risen back up. 
All right, I'm just going to get another uh, scripture. Now we're going to go to Daniel 4 just to prove the fact that the Heavenly Father has the ability to do that. He can take a nation, you know, he can take a human being, a person that's in their right mind, then he can strip that from them and put them in an animalistic state, all right, and preserve them, all right? And we're going to get this example out of Daniel 4. We're going to go to verse uh, 31 that was spoken to Nebuchadnezzar. It says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, the same way in Job as Esau was driven from men. It says, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. So Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> was made feral, all right? He was living as a beast in the field. He was eaten uh, out like a wild animal. And it says, what, till seven times passed over, which was seven years. And for Esau, instead of it being seven times, it was uh, it was a thousand times or a thousand seasons that he endured that for. All right. It says, verse 33, the same hour, uh, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like feathers and his nails like bird's claw. All right, and I'm going to get the picture to show it. So Nebuchadnezzar went from being the king of his empire or a functioning brain and whatnot to being a base creature. Literally, his body, all right, his morphology began to change. He grew hair that was hard and thick to keep his skin protected all right, and his nails grew so he could be able to feed himself by way of killing animals, all right, Ripping them to pieces and fucking devouring them and eating whatever else the hell else was out there. All right. And this and, and then it tells you uh, at verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the most high and praised and honored him that live, liveth forever. Whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. So the heavenly father flipped the switch and gave him back his understanding just like that after the seven years. All right, so now what are we going to do? We're going to go to Nebuchadnezzar. We'll type in Feral. This picture, yep. This is the classic picture. He became like this. And he wasn't as, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was an Assyrian, so I'm not going to, I'll say he, may, he probably wasn't this light-skinned. But this shows you. His nails grew, all right? His skin thickened. All right? His musculature probably did increase. The Lord probably put a spirit of strength on him so he could survive out there, and his hair grew, all right? And this is what happened to E when he was living in that time period. This is what we're reading about, y'all. This is that, when it tells you that revelation, all right, he was locked in the bottomless pit. This is how this man was living. And we just read it in Job 30, all right? And now we have Daniel 4 to link it up. Hey, every scripture has a precept to back it up and to prove it and to go with it. You know, especially here at Great Millstone, our elders and apostles have taught us well, you know, so we hey, we understand these things now through the spirit of Yahweh Bachim Yahweh Chai. All right, and so after that, uh, now I'll come back to that Revelation 20. So after that thousand years, it says this nigga was, <laughs> after a thousand years of him being gone, you know, people, everybody got to live it up a little bit. Then what? says he must be loosed a little season. At the end of this verse 2, it says, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. And you best believe he was loosed, all right? But when he was loosed, who was in power? All right, we're going to come to the Black Ages. I mean, the Dark Ages, and that's what they should be called, the Black Ages. All right, now this was a video I did called The Original Europeans Were Black. This was based off of the book. Uh, let me bring it up. The Negro Question, Part 4. Or this book, it's a really good book, right here. Let's see if I can get an image of it. it. This is a book proving, you know, without a doubt, amongst many others, showing you that Jake was in Europe ruling while Esau was down and under for that thousand year time period. All right. And I, what I'm going to do, we're going to flip through some of these pictures here. Make sure we're still recording. We're going to flip through some of these pictures that I took. And there's one picture in particular that I want to show you. Now, these are this is a video I did. You know, I'm just be flipping through it ten seconds at a time, really quick.
So let me see. Take it back to the first picture. Yep. Oh, oh, you know, this is a good one. So hey, when Esau did come back up to power, when the Heavenly Father put his the, his mind back to him, he started killing us. These were uh the black Irish they were getting rid of. Was it tell you the sixteen forty one rebellion? All right. Hey. Esau came up out of them caves with a vengeance. All right, he remembered that uh, old hatred. All right, here's here we go. This was the imagery that was all throughout Europe. Things like this. This is a coat of arms. I don't remember which one specifically. All right, but this is one. Why? Because Jake, you Israelites, so-called Negroes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were ruling in Europe, while our brothers, the Northern Kingdom, Gad, Reuben, Issachar, Ephraim, were ruling in the Americas alone for several thousand years. We were in Europe for that thousand-year period, all right, which is known as the Dark Ages. All right, and when the Renaissance came about, this is the people that Esau had to kill and make slaves out of. All right, this is true history, not the BS we were taught in school. All right, and if it wasn't for these relics, if it wasn't for the Lord leaving us these things, it would be damn near hard to believe. This is another picture. So I'm going to be jumping y'all, Slovakia. This is another picture. The Black Earls of Ireland. The letter I is the Hebrew letter. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll keep it paused. I just want these. I just want y'all to see these pictures. You see, Scottish King of Scottish King Alexander II, 1198. Hey, we still have 400. We still have about three, 200, 300 more years to go. Jake was doing a thing all in Europe. <laughs> Dress style, flex style. All right, let me see. Want some more? Another one. This is a, a image I found on uh, Google. All right. You know, it, how, how come we weren't taught this, y'all? Where is this history at? Where is this at? You know. Let's jump some more. We got more. Hey, Jake was in Russia. All right. Dark skin. Israelite men of Russia. All right now, some of them would have been, uh, especially dealing with the Moors, some of them would have been mixing with the Edomite women that they took out of the caves and recovered. All right, there's that one picture. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Moors. Let me see if I can find it. There's one book. It said. A man may have been with like five to ten of them at a time. Here we go. Here we go. So you had, wow, this is an extremely blurry picture. Uh, but you had stuff like this. You know, you had Jake ruling, and he would have made use of them other women. So many of those kings, uh, I'll say in Europe, a lot of them, not all, but a lot of them would have been lighter, lighter skinned. The more that Jake kept producing children with, uh, the, what do you call them? Concubines. You know? Let me see. Just getting some more images up. You know, Jake, you know, flawed out, flawless, you know, glossed out. Let me see. There's, there's a particular image that I remember. I'm trying to see if it has a, a Edomite my girl sprawled out over the floor. Jake stepping in the room. This is another one. It's not the one I'm looking for, though. That's good, though. You know, so I'll come back to this. I'm going to show you just a couple more of these. Jump forward. I spaced them out. Uh, okay, here's another one. Lord Belmont, Earl of, what is this? Anna, uh, Annesley. And a sleek coat of arms. Jake, Israelite men, dark skinned men. Where is this history at, y'all? Are we crazy or is somebody lying? You know? And our law says we can't be out here lying. So somebody, uh, <laughs> it ain't the one, it ain't us lying. Richard II, 1377, 1399, King of England and Wales, Scotland and Ireland, son of Edward the Black Prince. Once again, you know, he was probably a little bit lighter toned. Because by then we still would have been mixing with the women. All right. I just want to get a couple more. Let me get this one last picture. I'll see if I close it out with a script, and that'll be about it. 
you know, just proving the fact that it was them in the caves and it was us ruling while they were in the caves and how they came out and came and reclaimed this world. All right, hanging of suspected United Irishmen. This is a Jake being hung. All right, this is a part of what says what the Irish Rebellion of 1641. So when they came out, y'all, they came out with a vengeance, which is why they did us so cruel. Matter of fact, what is that Ezekiel? Is it 25 or is it 35? We'll go to that real quick. Thirty-five. They came out with a with a uh, was it an old hatred? Ezekiel thirty-five and five. Now this is dealing with Esau. It tells you in Mount Seir. All right. It says because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in their time of calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end, so that they came slaying us. All right. Why? Because of that perpetual hatred that they've had for us for a very long time. All right, and it tells you down here that they're going to be repaid for that. Old Mount Seir and Idumea. The Heavenly Father is going to repay them. So they came out of them caves with a fucking vengeance, y'all. All right, and you can go back to verse 25. It says it again. I hit 23, Salakia. Let's do this. Salakia. Go to, yep, Ezekiel 25 and 15, where it says this, Ezekiel 25 and 15. Uh, let me see. Oh, we'll start at 14. It says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do an Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power. It says, Thus saith the Lord, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the whole, for the old. Hatred. All right. So not only Esau, but these other heathens as well have the old hatred upon us. All right. Going back to hey, when we came out of Egypt and they saw that the Heavenly Father was dealing with us, you know, they wasn't liking that. And so when this guy came out of these caves, you best believe. And it, hey, what does it tell you in the law? Cursed is he that hangeth. All right. They was not playing with us. Just like they're not playing with us today when they blow you down in the streets. Oh, another one, Scottish coats of arm. Why? Because we were ruling while the beast, uh, or I'll say it's like while the serpent, that, that dragon, the devil, Satan, was locked away in Europe. Let's see what else we got. Oh, right here. It tells you these are the uh, countries that had Jake in them. It says Spain, France, Italy, Russia. Sweet Germans, and then by the time Esau got done with us, you know, they reclaimed all of Europe. And you know, I'm, I'm flipping through these pictures fast, you can just pause it. Black Irish of Jamaica by Joseph J. Williams. All right, this is another book. And actually, when I fast forward, we'll get to another image of uh, Black Irish. This is a uh, black Russians, yeah, black Russian family, 1914. The people of the Caucasus, Saint Petersburg, Kowalski, 1914. So bacon Russia still. All right, and there's one more picture. Where is that? Ooh, right there. Yep. Hey, they wasn't playing with us, you know. They wasn't playing with us when they came out the cave. Let's see. This is just uh, another image right here, Salakia. I believe this man got his head cut off uh, in his death by Esau. Right here, yep. So these were black Irish. And now you can, you know, it's hard to see, but you can, they got some tint to them. You can still clearly see their Jake features. But since they were, also, you know, they may have had Edomite mothers or grandmothers, whatever. They, they kept coming out a little bit lighter each, genera uh, each generation. For now, in 2020, they may look full-blown Edomite, all right? But they're originally, they were Israelites. You know, so that's the last picture I wanted out of that. But the uh, final picture I wanted to show is this cold-blooded piece of, piece of a picture right here. All right, I wonder if I can... Uh, I can zoom in on it. Now, what you have here, this was in the book of the Negro Question, Part 4. I'll show the full fucking picture. God damn it. 
All right, this is in the Negro question part four. It says German tapestries. All right, so this is out of Germany. It says 1400 AD, right around that thousand year mark, depicting black soldiers defending a black king and queen from attacking white men, called by whites wild men and Moors. All right, so you had Esau Edom coming out of the caves. Now, I know it's hard to see because he's crazy colors, but you look at the Jake. You had the king and the queen up there. They have clothes on, and this looks to be garments, you know, when you look at the bottom. But they're more sophisticated. You know, they have bow and arrows. They have proper clothing, you know, land. They have soldiers behind them with armor and whatnot. And you look at Esau. His beard is out. He's raggedy. You know, no true armor. This looks like just, it looks like they're wrapped in, in leaves and shit. And then they're barefooted. All right, why? Because they were just coming out of the cage, y'all, quite literally, and reclaiming theirs, which is known as the Renaissance period, which the elder apostle Tahar goes into very much, all right? And so what did they do? They came, they killed, they conquered, and they took over. And what do you think they would They would? They put on all the armor, all the clothes, all the weaponry that we once had and claimed it uh, for themselves, you know? This is a, a cold-blooded picture. Esau shouldn't have left this one up, you know? They're, they're clearly still in their, they've just come out of their beast state and they took us down. All right. So, you know, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show that, uh, history, you know, this man has lied and distorted everything, you know, but Hey, through the spirit, it's all, it's all coming out now. You know? So, Hey, as a matter of fact, and I get, uh, I get one more to end it. Uh, let me see. What is that? Luke. Is, what is that? Yep. Yeah. There's one in uh. There's two not to cover. Okay, I'll get the one in Luke. Luke eight and seventeen. It looks like. And then I'll end it because this a hey, he's all he's tried so hard to keep this information hidden, but now it's out and there's nothing he can do. That's why he's shutting he's shutting shit down. Right, he's getting rid of things. He's bringing it into this thing. All right. Uh, Luke 8 and 17, it says, For nothing is nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. All right, And so we know who we are now, and there's nothing that this dude can do to stop it or change it, and it's over. All right? And I'm going to leave the link for this as well. All right? so with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Akwarash, the owners of the elders and apostles, great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akim. Walk walking, learning, teaching of truth and sincerity. I'm going to say shalom.